the title of my message today is fight or succumb say it with me fight or succumb what does those words mean we are living in the last days and the word of god says that the days are evil say the days are evil and are you seeing that we are living in a time when there is so many wickedness that's going on there is so much barbaric things that are happening in our country i was looking at some of the things in the news my heart was so broken how can we do such things in a nation like this that was founded on god's word that was started with prayer have you wondered the same way if you have then this message is for you god is calling his people to fight say fight what you are not willing to fight for you will succumb to it maybe that is a disease maybe that is something in your life maybe that's your relationship maybe that's your kids what you are not willing to fight for you will succumb to that the enemy wants to steal kill and to destroy that is his agenda from the beginning and he has not changed his business plan at all that is his business but god is calling his people his church the ecclesia in the greek means it's not one church or that church down the block when god's word says ecclesia in greek that means his church that's only one kingdom that's only one church and if you are a part of his church then god is calling you to fight say fight we are living in a place at a time where you know we just cannot just go by the status quo we just cannot go with the flow okay we just cannot do what you feel right and comfortable and conducive to you god is calling his people to rise up god is calling his people to fight this fight of faith if you are not willing to fight you will succumb to the circumstance to the things that the enemy will bring in your life the thing that the world will throw at you the thing the wicked people will make you do if you are not willing to fight then you don't have a choice but to be at the mercy of the enemy and his influences that could be circumstances that could be people in the roman culture wrestling was a very popular thing when you look at this wrestling it was given more importance to other sport like boxing or karate where the goal was not to protect oneself but to defeat the other and to conquer the opponent in a physical engagement here you see that they want to fight even in that fight if they lose their life they are ready for it they have only one choice victory or death that is how determined they were 
on the spiritual sense god has promised us the victory okay you have to keep that goal very clear many believers don't know if they are going to win or if they are not going to win the word of god says he has made you more than a conqueror in christ jesus if you are in god's kingdom if you are in christ you are a new creation you are not going to be the same old person with the same old nature the nature of christ comes in you and here god is saying you are more than a conqueror say i am more than a conqueror in christ jesus that is who you are you might want to say that every single day maybe some of you are in a battle you find yourself in a battle you need to just say that i am more than a conqueror in christ jesus in whatever be that situation that the enemy wants to put on you that could be a spiritual situation or a physical one or a financial one or a relationship you have to say i am more than a conqueror in christ jesus you know that attitude matters that attitude the winner attitude the conqueror attitude the one who will have the victory in jesus you have to get up in the morning with that victor mentality and not a victim mentality that is what the enemy wants you to have a victim mentality but god wants you to have a victor mentor mentality you find yourself in a battle you should say i'm coming out of this i'm one day closer to my miracle i'm one day closer to my healing i am coming out of this health challenge that i'm going through sometimes god would allow you to go through a little something okay to see how your faith is he would just allow you and just watch what you going to do in your in this test like how a teacher would teach you so many things and you will be asked to write an exam nobody likes that test or that finals you know or the quiz no student likes it you know but we have to go through that quiz and that test in life god would just allow you to go through some test to see how strong your faith muscle is what are you going to do with god's word that he has taught you what how are you going to fight with the training that he has given you the enemy is so set on the destruction of god's people he never sleeps and he he always does something he's forming weapons okay that's why god's word says no weapon formed against i shall prosper weapons are being formed weapons are to destroy the in the work the enemy's weapons are always to destroy and when you look at how the soldiers are in any military when you look at the the military there are five dif- five different things five different departments in the us military we are not going to go into the details of the military okay but no soldier will be excused for sleeping and a soldier will be severely dealt if he is negligent or he is careless that is what the us military would do if somebody is negligent or somebody fails in that duty or somebody sleeps they are severely dealt in god's kingdom he says fight the good fight of faith and what does that make you that would make you and me a soldier say soldier 
a soldier every single one in his kingdom is a soldier i don't know if you are very excited about this news but i am here to announce that if you are in god's kingdom you are a soldier say i am a soldier if you are watching by internet say i am a soldier you are a soldier and the main duty of a soldier is to watch they have to watch for the enemy they have to watch for the enemy they are not there to protect themselves they are not there to duck when the enemy is coming against them they not only defend themselves but their main objective is to go on the offensive the main objective is to pull down the enemy as a soldier you just cannot live in a place where you want to just defend yourself you want to make sure that you are safe and your family is safe you are okay and your family is okay and, and there is nothing wrong in doing that we all have to make sure that our family is protected and we are all safe but if we stop there if we stop at that point then we do not qualify to be at that place where god wants us to be god wants us to be in a place where we go on the offensive and pull down the enemy today i am going to talk about five different aspects of how you fight this enemy like how david took five stones with him we are going to talk about five different things how god would help us use that to fight the enemy what are our weapons god has given us the weapons and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal carnal means it's not of the world and from the things of this world turn with me to second corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for the pulling down of strong holds the word of god talks about weapons who ha- carries the weapons the soldiers the one who are in military carry the weapons with them the policemen carry a weapon with them so today god is arming you with his weapons and in the same book the same chapter if you look at the third verse here paul is writing to the corinthian church for though we walk in the flesh we do not war against the flesh oh that is something that we need to look at we walk in the flesh people look at our body our legs the places where we go they are ju- just looking at our body the physical part of us but when it comes to fight we do not war according to the flesh so it is totally something different when it comes to the fighting when it comes to the war we do not war again like how we would do in our flesh Paul writes to the Ephesian church again he's saying in Ephesians 6 verses 12 to 18 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of god say whole armor of god 
here in the blessing we just started a series on the whole armor of god and it is so um so useful to us to get equipped to fight verse 13 says take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day say withstand in the evil day you know the bible doesn't promise us only good days i have news for you there are good days and then there are evil days jesus said in this world you will have trouble say trouble but be of good cheer i have overcome the world see that is what you and i have to do to overcome we need to become that conquerors we need to become that overcomers we are not going to succumb to the circumstance we are not going to succumb we are going to be fighters and we are going to be overcomers amen let's read on verse 14 stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet with the preparation for the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints this is a loaded passage but here we are going to talk about the 16th verse the first point i want to make is the fight of faith First of all we need to know that this we are in a fight and this fight is a fight of faith. Above all in verse 16 Paul writes taking the shield of faith. There are times when God's word says above all. You need to pay attention to that. Above all. Say above all. The shield of faith. It is the shield of faith that is going to stop the enemy's arrows. In the old days in the Bible days they had shield as big as a human being and in one hand they have the shield and the other hand they had the sword. So this one was to defend them and that one was to offend the enemy. So they took both in their hands. One is a defensive weapon, one is an offensive weapon. So here God says when you fight this fight of faith Paul writes to his spiritual son in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12 he's instructing him to fight that fight of faith and Paul in his last days he said I have fought the fight of faith I have fought that good fight that is his accomplishment how about you are you in that fight are you fighting the fight of faith are you doing good are you gaining ground are you just ga- gaining that victory over vi- victory like how david had a victory over the bear and then the lion and finally he goes to goliath and he pulls him down in, a, in the spiritual life we go from glory to glory God enables us to fight those small little things. There are some Christians, they are so weak in their faith. Hey, they don't just invest their time in prayer. They don't invest time in God's word. They don't pray in the Holy Ghost. And then they find themselves so weak. They're saying, sister, I feel so weak. The enemy is coming. I don't know what to do. I, I just don't know what to do. After the enemy has come, they just don't know what to do. God's word says that you have to be armed. 
you have to take the time in god's word and be so prayed up so when the enemy comes you are ready to charge you are ready to fight you are ready to get that battle going and you are running towards your enemy like this little david did when he saw that enemy he didn't duck down he didn't hide he didn't talk about the enemy he didn't know what to do he exactly knew what to do he knew that his job was to get that enemy down he didn't look at the size of the enemy he didn't look at the armor of that enemy he didn't look at the skill of the enemy he was ready he was ready so you need to be a person who is strong in your faith if you look at what the people of god did in the days of joshua you know the story you may have heard it in your sunday school turn with me to joshua chapter 6 and verse 20 it's a very good uh, picture of what happened the enemy came on one side but god's people took over the city So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet I'm reading from Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat then the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city said and they took the city you are not called to just barely get by no god has called you to take your city shout the name of your city wherever you are which city do you come from shout it out yes god is calling his people to take that city amen you are called for much more you are called to take your city this is what psalmist says i love this psalm 18 and verse 29 for by you i can run against a troop by my god i can leap over a wall you need to say that for by you i can run against a troop by my god i can leap over a wall i can leap over a wall god's word says through god it is by whom you can you will do by you by my god says the psalmist in isaiah we read 26 and verse 4 trust in the lord the lord is everlasting strength who gives you the strength to fight it is the lord you need to just draw from that well you need to draw strength from god they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength we get our strength from the lord the psalm says in psalm 60 and verse 12 Psalm 60 verse 12 through God we will do valiantly say valiantly for it is who he who shall tread down our enemies it is he say it is he it is he who shall tread down our enemies It is God who goes before us and straightens everything that's crooked. He's the captain of this army. He's going before you and you are just in that army. You are armed, you are ready. You are ready to go whenever he calls you, you are ready to fight. That is the right attitude. There was a time when the lord said to moses hey why do you cry to me moses was a leader but 
there was a time that he didn't know what to do oh he was all panicky there were so many battles coming his way he he went to the lord and he started crying i don't know about you but there are times when you just don't know what to do you just start crying right you may be in that place but god is encouraging you today god is giving you that strength he's saying i am going to go with you why do you cry you know don't cry i am going to strengthen you i am going to fill you with the holy spirit i am going to give you the grace i am going to be with you i am not going to leave you and this is what happened in hebrews we see that there was this time when god wanted to give victory turn with me to hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 to 34 hebrews 11:32 to 34 and what more shall i say for the time would fail me to tell of gideon and barak and samson and jephtha also of david and samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms were righteousness obtained promises stop the mouths of lions quench the violence of fire escape the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong became valiant in battle underline that turn to fight the armies of the aliens today we are talking about how to win the battles and how god wants to equip you in exodus chapter 14 verses 15 to 16 we see that we say that the lord is telling moses why do you cry to me tell the children of israel to go forward but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it and the children of israel shall go on the dry ground through the midst of the sea what is your sea what are you going through god is exactly as committed to you as he was to moses he says he said why do you cry many times when we start crying god would say the same thing to us hey don't be a cry baby i have taught you what to do i have trained you you have been coming to the king's bride every month and be like the king's bride fight this fight you know how to fight go ahead and fight this battle i will give you the victory i was reading about this mighty woman you know during world war 2 you must have heard about cory ten boom I'm going to read from an ex, a, a small write up that i took out of the internet i don't want to change the numbers and the years so i'll read out to you ravensburg was a german concentration camp for women During World War II located in northern Germany 90 kilometers north of Berlin at a site near the village of Ravensbrück the camp was intended to hold exclusively female inmates all women inmates between 1939 and 1945 some 130,000 to 132,000 female prisoners passed through that camp system around 40,000 were polish from poland 26,000 jewish 18,800 russian 8,000 french and 1,000 dutch according to the encyclopedia about 50000 of them perished from diseases they perished out of starvation they perished out of overwork and despair 
2200 were killed in the gas chambers 15000 of the total survived until liberation 3500 female prisoners were still alive in the main camp this is where coriton boom was there she would have her bible with her there were times when god would just hide her and the bible she was a fighter she was a warrior she would not succumb to anything she said i am not going to die to these diseases i will not die because of starvation she had this her mind made up to fight that fight not only was she saved but she saved so many people in that concentration camp when i was reading this incident during the world war 2 you know we are at a place where they say that the world war 3 has already started god wants to raise up his people god wants to raise up his people everywhere and god is going to use women in a very strategic way Rahab was used to save the people. Coriton Boom was used to save the people. Esther in her day was used to save her people. God wants to use you to be that fighter to save many. And the second thing God wants you to know is that the name of the Lord. Paul writes, whatever you do, you do it in the name of the Lord. When you look at the life of David, David was on one side, Goliath was on the other. When David looked at Goliath, he remembered two things. One is, he was an uncircumcised person and he was a philistine that's all the rest of the crowd was seeing many other things many other details of goliath they were looking at his height they were looking at his skill they were looking at his weapon they were looking at his brothers and they were looking at many other things but david had those eyes to see that he was an uncircumcised philistine and he has come to come against the armies of god he was so jealous for his god that's what made him go and fight nothing else he was so jealous for his god he just couldn't stand this uncircumcised philistine to come and defile and come against and do things against the armies of his god first samuel turn with me to first samuel 17th chapter 45 to 50 then david said to the philistine You come to me with a sword with a spear with a javelin I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel whom you defied Do you see the word I come to you in the name of the Lord Some trust in horses some trust in chariots but we believe we will remember the name of the lord that's what psalm 20 and verse 7 says we will remember the name of the lord that's all we need to know do the righteous will run into the name of the lord and they will be safe there is safety there's protection there is provision in the name of the lord 
that is a name of covenant you are a person of covenant god has made a covenant with you so when you go under the name of the lord victory becomes yours i go in the name of the lord psalm 44 verse 6 and 7 i do not trust in my bow i do not count on my sword to save me god you are the one who gives us victory over our enemies many times we trust in our experiences many times we trust in our position many times we trust in the wealth we have you know those are not the things to trust in a time of calamity you know we trust in the lord who always causes us to triumph you say in the name of jesus i receive my victory in the name of the lord i receive my healing in the name of the lord i win over my enemies in the name of the lord i speak restoration you need to learn to speak in the name of the lord that is what little david did when that enemy was coming at him not only that for samuel 17 verses 46 to 50 if you read that this day the lord will deliver you into my hand i will strike you and take your head from you this day i will give the carcasses of the camp of the philistines to the birds of the air the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a god in israel look at his zeal for god his god in israel why was he even fighting not to get a name for himself his heart was for that land he said that that the people will know that there is a god in israel and goes on to say in verse 50 so david prevailed over the philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the philistine and killed him but there was no sword in the hand of david david did not have a sword in his hand you do not have what this world has many times the sad part is that people who are in god's kingdom try to compare themselves with the worldly people how sad is that there is no comparison there is you don't have to have that sword in your hand to win that war because your warfare is not carnal they are mighty in the holy ghost and then the third point i want to talk to you is about god's word god's word god's word can be two types one is the written word ephesians 6 verse 17 says the sword of the spirit which is the word of god hebrews 4 and 12 says the word of god is living and the word of god is powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart that is god's word that is the written word in first john 2 and verse 14 we read that i have written to you there is a written word jesus in matthew 4 verses 1 to 11 if you read that passage he was saying it is written it is written it is written you know to fight the enemy the devil was talking to jesus you know how he fought he says it is written it is written we need to just do that in our vocabulary any time you see the enemy lurking around say it is written it is written it is written more and more you say the written word the enemy backs up and then there is a rhema word the spoken word there are times god would speak to you even when you are sleeping the spirit 
always will communicate with you there are times when god will talk to you it's a spoken word like how paul god would use his servants to speak to you that's why god puts his servants to talk into your life so they hear from god and they speak it's always a good thing to go to places where god's word god's word is spoken out god's word is spoken with much prayer you need to go to places and listen to messages which come from god through his anointed servants paul was a voice in timothy's life who is the voice in your life do you have a mentor do you have a teacher who is that person that god has called to speak into your life if you don't have you need to have mentors like how timothy had paul to be his mentor he was speaking into his life speaking into his life always speaking into his life and timothy was willing to receive that counsel receive that instruction and he just did what was spoken to him the bible says if you will listen to counsel and if you will receive instruction you will become wise there is so much foolishness even in the body of christ why they just don't want to listen they just want to have what somebody has but they don't want to do what somebody did in the area of prayer in the area of serving in the area of giving you know there are so many things that you need to receive and do it spoken word this is what paul said to timothy first timothy chapter 1 and verse 18 i charge this i charge i commit to you son timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and a good conscience which some have rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck some believers go through shipwreck their life is so torn apart their bearings are so loose that they just cannot gather everything together why the answer is right here they are so stiff necked they don't want to listen to any counsel i know it all who are you to tell me hey i'm here to tell you listen to the counsel receive the instruction that is the right attitude that's the right character have you received counsel when is the last time you received that instruction and followed something in your life no wonder some lives are so torn apart they just uh, don't know what to do they are in such a desperate situation it is their own decision that put that have that has put them in that in that place and that is what paul is saying hey some have rejected so concerning the faith have suffered what suffered shipwreck think about that we don't want to be in that category do you not me we don't want to be in that place where they would not l- l- heed to god's word you talk to them about the area of praying they will argue you talk about the area of giving they don't want to give they only want to receive god is saying hey to win your battles you need to be in a place where you are receiving the instruction you are getting that wise counsel and here in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14 he says do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid hands on you elders of the church 
there are some people that are called elders of a church back in the day the elders were the ones that were laying hands and praying not the pastor these days is you see pastors laying hands and praying in your churches come from so many different churches you go to different church and you go to different one preacher goes to another one and you know you go to another you we have people at least five different churches are represented here but even in the early apostolic church it was growing up in addition but you know when it multiplied it multiplied when the deacons started doing the work of god it was it multiplied when the elders and the deacons started sharing the word ministering to people laying hands on people when you find somebody sick call the pastors of the church does it say that no what does it say call the elders a elders get a call you know we are at a place here in the churches of america god is going to raise up the deacons raise up the elders to a place when they will be the ones who will be called when somebody is sick the elders will go and they will lay hands on the sick they will anoint with oil and here you see the elders are the ones that laid hands and prayed elders the church god is going to raise up those people in the churches of america where they will lay hands and what will happen they will give a prophecy to the people like timothy and here you see that the elders of the church laid hands on Timothy. Yes, Paul was a, an apostle. But then God keeps so many people in his kingdom to bless you on the spiritual side. The spoken word is so important. When you look at the the prayer life of David, he was a man of prayer. That is my fourth point. In the warfare there are different kinds of prayer that is not the title for today there are three kinds of prayer that really helps you to get the victory one is the fasting and prayer prayer and fasting is so important in a christian life as an individual you pray and fast as a family or as a couple you have to pray and fast those are the families that are going to be very victorious they are the ones that are going to overcome so the enemy tries to put division between the husband and wife in some homes but the husband and wife don't talk with each other let alone praying together and let alone fasting together but god wants to train your fingers for battle he wants to train your hand for war psalm 144 and verse 1 talks about it so a very famous person called e m bounds he used to be a man of prayer you know what he says E M Bounds says he who does not pray robs himself of God's help and places God in a place where he cannot help not only he robs himself and he that prayerless person would place God in a place where he cannot help very helpless situation God's word says in Matthew chapter 17 verse 19 to 21 this is a passage you have to pay close attention in prayer we have three types of prayer one is fasting and prayer in the american church that is not the popular thing you do in a church you go to an average spirit filled church you don't see in the church calendar a time where the church fasts and prays i'm not here to um, be critical but i have gone to so many churches and uh, i have seen the church calendar 
but are you able to hear me through the microphone yeah okay i don't see that in many calendars the church does not pray with fasting but days are coming god is raising up people like you and you and you and the ones that are here and the ones that are listening you are going to be that voice maybe you may not have a microphone you may not have a pulpit but you have a voice god will raise you up to be that pioneer in your church to start that fasting and prayer because that is where the power is that is where the victory is that is the powerhouse matthew 17:19 to 21 then the disciples came to jesus privately and said why could we not cast it out talking about the evil spirit evil spirit was tormenting and the, they brought the, the the boy to jesus but they couldn't drive out the enemy they were so weak on in their spiritual side and then jesus said to them because of your unbelief if you have faith like a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you however this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting two things here one is belief one is prayer and fasting you know if these two are there then you will surely have victory over the enemy then what happened was jesus rebuked that spirit and the body and the boy was healed so fasting and prayer is a, an aspect of prayer that's very important and then the prayer of agreement one will chase a thousand two will chase a 10000 that is the equation on the spiritual side matthew 18 verses 19 to 20 jesus says i say to you if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven the prayer of agreement is so important when jesus sent he sent two by two god puts a husband and wife in a family one of the reasons is that if both of them agree together in earth it will be done by the father in heaven prayer of agreement is so significant the third kind of prayer is praying in tongues praying in the spirit this is something that you and i have to desire desire so much that god give me the prayer language god let me pray in the holy ghost praying in the spirit always is what god's word says what is that praying in the spirit always in the spirit any time is a good time to pray praying in tongues the spirit helps us in our weakness jude writes in verse 20 building yourself up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit praying in the holy spirit is an experience that you should desire in meetings like this we pray for the anointing of the holy spirit we lay hands and the the gifts are stirred up with the restrictions we we just keep the distance but you can just receive wherever you are in cornelius's house they were all gathered and the spirit came upon everybody that was listening to god's word so in the prayer three aspects the fasting prayer prayer of agreement and praying in the holy spirit are the kinds of prayer that helps you in getting the victory in spiritual warfare finally the fifth point is the blood of jesus 
Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen writes in his book that there was a missionary and she was at a place, at a very remote place. What happened was a poisonous scorpion bit her. And the whole village thought that she will succumb to that poison and she will die. They were getting ready for the funeral. But this missionary, she was in such a pain on one side. But you know what she said? I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. That's all she was saying. Continually she was pleading the blood of Jesus. And what happened was, she came to life. She came to life and he writes like this, all the natives watched and waited for her to die. And when she suffered no ill effects, most of them accepted Jesus. Amen. That is her faith in that blood of Jesus. That blood has not lost its power. Tomorrow right here, we will be serving communion. And I am expecting that there will be people that are in these pews who will receive that healing. They will receive the deliverance. They will receive the power of God manifested. Signs, wonders and miracles are going to happen because it is not a customary thing that we are doing once in a couple of weeks. The blood of Jesus has power. There was a time in the island of Malta. There was this venomous snake that came in the hand of Paul. Acts 28 verses 4 and 5 says, When the islanders saw the snake hanging from Paul's hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer. For through, though he escaped from the sea, the goddess of justice has not allowed him to live. That is what the world is looking at God's people and saying that God's people are the evil people. But what happened? The story doesn't stop there. Verse 5, Acts 28 verse 5 says, But Paul shook, say Paul shook, the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Your God is the same God. Paul's God is your God. Paul's God is my God. Say it. Paul suffered no ill effects. Paul suffered no harm. Say no harm. Colossians chapter 2 Verse 14 to 15 talks about what Christ did for you. The work is done on the cross. Let me remind you of that. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Christ made a public spectacle. He disarmed principalities and powers. Say principalities and powers. Christ disarmed all those things. Yes, they have some powers. There's a power of darkness. Then there are principalities. And then we, we see there are different demonic powers. But you should always remember that Jesus Christ disarmed principalities and powers. And he has given us the victory. We are not fighting this losing battle, people of God. So God is saying, be 
be vigilant be vigilant be cautious look out if the enemy comes you run and charge at him and you resist the enemy and he will flee from you that is what you need to do you have to resist the enemy and he will flee from you the enemy is like a roaring lion in first peter 5 8 we see that he is a roaring lion whom he may devour that is why we need to be alert we need to be sober we need to be vigilant we need to be watchful in prayer god is saying in his word in summary first of all you need to be a person of faith fight the good fight of faith it is so important that you have your faith muscle growing up like how a weight lifter will take that weight every day lift that weight every single day to get his muscles up you have to build those faith muscle for the day of adversity because there's an adversary see and then the name of the lord i don't know how much you are using the name of the lord use the name of jesus in everything at every point not as a closing sentence for your prayers no do it in the name of the lord whatever you do in the name of the lord some trust in horses and chariots we will remember the name of the lord and then comes the word of god written word and the spoken word give importance to both and then what about the prayer we talked about the 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 fasting and prayer if you do not have a fasting and prayer in your church calendar go to your pastor and say pastor let's do a prayer and fasting every month and i will be there i can lead i can do something fasting and prayer people that is what will keep the enemy at bay and then the prayer of agreement do you have a prayer partner do you have a friend that you pray with There's so many believers they just want to be lone rangers hey i don't want to do anything with anybody they don't want to know the name of the ne- the one that's si- sitting next to them in church they are so righteous hey we need people God says that you need a praying friend. Do you have a friend that prays with you? If you don't have a friend, you meet one of these sisters. They pray every day. A prayer of agreement, which is so important. Praying in the Holy Ghost. If you do not have a prayer language, you can meet us after the service. We will pray over you. We have our coordinators here they are all anointed and gifted they will lay hands on you and you can have your prayer language then you can pray in the holy ghost finally plead the blood of jesus you know when you get up in the morning plead the blood of jesus on yourself on your family on your belongings when you go to bed plead the blood of jesus draw a blood line around your children you know when they go to school draw that blood line around them because the world is so evil out there you put your children in that blood line and send them no evil will befall them no plague will come near your dwelling the enemy tries to put anything you will receive your healing yes that's my point if what if what if the enemy puts something oh if he puts we are going to fight we are going to come out stronger because that is what god wants to do for his people be strong in the lord and in the power of his might let's stand up and let's close with a word of prayer at this time let's just think about what god has spoken to you he talked about the spoken word what did the lord speak to you today is there anything that you heard from god
take an inventory of your own life where are you on the spiritual side are you seeing victories in your life or a series of things where you see you are victimized you find yourself like a victim if that is you god wants to pour out his spirit on you we are not here at the king's bride to just go back the way we came in we are here to receive the word of the living god god the word of god is living and powerful sharper than a double edged sword but we are here to receive the holy spirit anointing everyone with your hearts open your hands lifted up ask the holy spirit to fill you with his power with his anointing yes he wants to pour out his spirit on all flesh and you will receive your prayer language if you have you do not have a prayer language lift those hands up and say god give me the prayer language god give me the ability to fast and pray god help me to fast and pray lord give me the grace give me the spirit of supplication give me the spirit of grace come on come on lift up those hands and pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost everybody everybody just open up your mouth and increase the voice and just pray in the holy ghost as you pray as you pray those things that have clogged your spiritual wells are unplugging 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 everything that has stopped the spiritual wells of revival in your life god is just taking it out even as you begin to pray come on come on go ahead go ahead pray. pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost for your life pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy ghost the spirit of the lord is in this place riba kala marasha baga landa raga derama shabaga bana daradu raba shaba dira kadala ba those in your homes open up your mouth open your your mouth that anointing is flowing that river is flowing that river is flowing that wind is blowing that wind is blowing on your life the wind of the holy ghost is flowing irama shekala madura antara basha bagada deramani diri anda lako shekeri sabana dura baba re bandala baraba shaganda lada darama do duro shaba re makho boduro ba shekele ni ampara mashakara dari ama mama the fire of god is coming on god's people everybody everybody dorama shaba baba baba but the fire of god the fire of the holy ghost the fire of the holy ghost sorama shagala dorra baba 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 roma shakalo doranda laba Yes oh lord yes oh lord yes oh lord yes oh god yes oh god yes oh god yes yes oh god re ma shakala mandoro do 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 ra ma khaba tira tara ba 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 ho ramani dana do ra ba 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 receive the mighty anointing receive the mighty anointing receive that mighty anointing receive the mighty anointing receive receive he is coming upon you he is coming upon you the spirit of the lord is in this place the spirit of the lord is in this place re mani do ranta la ma khoro ba 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 re malandulanta la shaka baliantu ro bashra da 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 ho riyanta la madura mane darama e ramana shaba baba bariantu ra khaba re kho shati ni dini andalana rama kho didi dibi shaba ho re ma shibilinda ra kho shara da 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 father in the mighty name of jesus we give you glory lord we give you honor in your house oh god god we are unprofitable servants we are here to do the duty that you have assigned for us oh god to you belongs all the glory it is you it is you oh god it is by christ it's with the holy spirit 
God, we are winning every battle. God, I pray for all my sisters who are gathered here, oh God. God, I pray for everyone that is watching. In Jesus' mighty name, give them the victory. Give them that victory. Give them that victory. Help them to be sober and vigilant. Help them, Lord, to be alert and watchful. Father, we are one day closer to that miracle. We are one day closer to seeing that victory in our life because we are gaining ground every single day. Thank you, dear Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please take your seats. Thank you for joining here at the King's Bride. You can sit down and you can pray. If you need individual prayers, you know, our coordinators are available to pray for you. And if you have a prayer request, you can send it across to prayer at pottersministries.org. And we will pray for you. Thank you for joining. God bless you. God willing, we will see you next month on the fourth Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Thank you.